don't confuse the issue with facts. One of my favorite things to say, one of you guys brought up Bill Clinton, just reminded me of this. And let's Bill Clinton, what is, is. No, uh, no Chewbacca theory there to argue against the market. What the market is doing is what the market is doing. The price of the instrument, the ask, is the lowest amount that someone will sell to you, whatever that it is, whatever market. The value of the instrument is the bid, and that's the lowest amount that someone will pay you for it. What is, is. The bid is the bid, the ask is the ask. You get what you get, you don't throw a fit. You might not like it, and by the way, statistically, you won't. There's been, his name escapes me at the moment, but I've done complete presentations on this based on stuff that some of you guys had sent me, actually one of your girls, based on the fact that you're almost always in a drawdown. Robert Frey, I think is his name, not to be confused with Robert Gray, who I think is a jazz musician or a guitarist or something, but anyway. More often than not, you're going to be in a drawdown, meaning that the positions are going to go against you. And that can be tough. And we've talked about this quite a bit, the neurology of it all, the emotions of a negative observation or a losing trade or losing in a trade and watching it worse. The emotions of that have twice the impact of a positive trade or a positive observation. The reason I'm talking about observations is my ultimate goal, is even, with, even with the intraday stuff, would be to put it on and go about my life and let the stops and everything do as it may. But I am a little guilty of watching that screen a little too much. Now, all this got me thinking about introspection and perpetual distortion. And I think, I know that Douglas talks a lot about perception. And I think he talks about perceptual distortion, and what's the other one? Selective perception. And those are two things that are very dangerous. And I've, there are some other authors that have talked quite a bit about this. Anyway, this definition is pretty good. Perceive, interpret, or look at someone or something in a particular way. Now, let's say you're long stocks or crypto or whatever. And the market is going down and has a little bit of a rally, a pullback, right? And so far, it just looks like a little bit of a bounce. You look at that, and in your head, you're hoping, smoking the hopium, right? You're hoping that it's a big, huge uptrend. And you might actually see that as an uptrend and think that, oh, there's an uptrend developing. I'm going to be fine. Now, let's say that you're short, okay? You want the market to go down and the market's going up, 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 up. So it's going down a little bit. You're like, oh yeah, that's it. It's topped, it's done. It's headed lower. I'm gonna be just fine. <laughs> Was it the, Tom McCullen said his, his drill sergeant said, hope as in birth control is not a strategy in warfare. <laughs> Something like that. Now, what's amazing is, I've said this a thousand times too, and it, what's great is a lot of these books are in public domain, so you can just uh, download them on the internet for free. And uh, I bought, I probably have three or four copies of this G.C. Selden book laying around, just because I want an actual book. I don't want to download and print it or read it on a computer or a phone or whatever. I just want an actual book in my hands, something nice and binded or whatever. But um, I'm trying to think of the name of the company. I can't think of Cosmos Classics or something like that as a lot of these little books. And it's a, it's a little book, but it was written probably 120 years ago by G.C. Selden, maybe even longer. One of the greatest difficulties encountered by the active trader is that of keeping his mind in a balanced and unprejudiced condition when he is heavily committed to either the long side or the short side of the market. Amen, my brother from another mother. Jesse's Livermore, Jesse's Livermore's book which is, uh, he wrote it under a, a surname, uh, what do you call it, a pseudonym or whatever, talks a lot about this, that you can't see clearly if you have a position. Uh, Mike Tyson or his manager, one of the two, said everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Unconsciously to himself, he permits his judgment to be swayed by his hopes. Been there, done that, did that today. 
and I have the, the book coming up in a slide. I forget the name of it. I think it's the psychology of the stock market. Anyway, if you're out of the market and the market's in a really nice trend, you might actually see that it's chopping along or come up with some kind of reasoning as to why you shouldn't be in this really nice trend. Now, say you have a textbook set up and you've been losing a lot of money lately, okay? And this is one thing that I'm really cognizant of. Some people buy when they have money, some people sell when they need money, okay? Quoting Tom McClellan's late mother, Marion. And you've been losing money and you see a great looking setup come along and in your head, what are you seeing? Well, you're seeing, eh, this thing just looks like it's rolling over. That doesn't look like a, a textbook pullback to the 30 EMA. I hope we took this trade. I don't remember when this was. BCLI, I think we took that one. And I hope it worked. <laughs> anyway, or if it's losing money, you might not see anything, okay? You might just see, I don't see the pattern. I don't see the setup. Now, let's say you see a mediocre setup and you're printing money. Something looks like this, kind of chopping back and forth, going sideways. In your head, you might think, ooh, that looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and pop in that. You know, I'm making so much money. Who cares if I give a little bit of that money? It's it's worth it, right? And that's where the bad behavior comes in. So it is the psychology of stock market. I knew I had this slide in here somewhere. The psychology of the stock market, Cosmo Class, Cosmo. Cosmo Classics, you can get off Amazon too. You can get off my books to read page. G.C. Selden, good little book. The average man is not blessed or cursed. However, you may look at it with an analytical mind. We see as through a glass darkly. Our ideas are always enveloped in a haze and our reasoning powers work in a rut from which we find it painful if not impossible to escape. Many of our emotions and some of our acts are merely automatic responses to an external stimuli. As I said, I think last week, I try to be cognizant of my entry orders, especially if they're gonna be a market order. And if I do a market order, I try to count to 10 or do something to stop me from just click, click, click. And ideally, I wanna put in a stop below the market for shorts or above the markets for longs. So I'm not so automatically responding to these external external stimuli. So the flickering ticks, as I think Todd Harrison calls them. I love that. I wish I came up with that. <laughs> wonderful as the development of the human brain, it wonderful as is, the, the, the language is very flowery in these books, these older books like this, but it's beautiful. Wonderful as is the development of the human brain, it originated from an enlarged ganglion, and its first response is to still, is still practically that of the ganglion. I wish I had, I need to remember to get my brain out of storage. <laughs> hey, I thought your mind was in the gutter. No, 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 my brain's in storage. I have a human brain in storage. And makes for a good little prop during a presentation. But even 100 years ago or more, G.C. Selden, I guess neurologists at the time, knew that our brain has not caught up to modern society. And that's a whole other topic in and of itself to discuss. But a lot of the things we do kind of go back to that caveman type of thing. And, and if you think about it, if you hear like a, a stick or, or whatever, crack or whatever, it might be a saber-toothed tiger getting ready to eat you, so you better run. Now, if you're standing or, or sitting in front of your screens and staring at the screens, this danger comes at you, the market's going against you, your immediate impulse is to do something and you're kind of stuck there frozen. And if you, I don't want to go too deep on you or whatever, but if you think about it, that creates a lot of animosity within you because you feel like you have to do something. And that's where kind of getting back to that fewer observations, less is more. And less is more could also mean be more and more selective and figure out what's the most amount of time and most amount of setups you could not trade 
and then only trade the ones that are really, really, really worth it. Getting back to the garbage in, garbage out. Now, again, we see everything through a prism, and I came up with the idea of a perception prism. And I think this this is not an original thought after doing some Googling. Some others have called it a perception prism, but we're not really seeing what is, we're seeing what our brain manifests what is. We're seeing the market in our mind. We're seeing a lot of times what we want to see, in some cases, we're seeing what we hope to see. 